So my final presentation uh, for this workshop uh, is a subject we have also talked about a lot this week, and that is partnerships. Uh, none of the informatics institutions, as a matter of fact, no institution can survive in the modern world without partnerships. And the reason is that the world of knowledge is too large uh, for one institution to do it all. You can't have all the expertise in the world under one roof. Uh, the infrastructure required to do it all is way too large for one institution. Uh, the informatics infrastructure and knowledge to do it all is way too large for one institution. So, your institution is here. And these are the connections you should be making in your network. So at one point, you are here, the hub, for your basic core work in which all the, piece, all the other institutions and people in the network are helping. But in other networks, in other, for other projects, you may be here, or here, or here, contributing to another hub. And if you contribute to hubs, they will contribute to you as a hub. So let me go over again the reasons why informatics partnerships are essential. And we've discussed a lot of these here, but I think it helps to summarize. Informatics infrastructure is too big to do alone. You have to have the partnerships for tools, for servers, for internet networks, and so forth, standards. You don't want to invent all this by yourself. You want to share in the common standards, common tools, and an infrastructure. But it is too big for one institution, partnerships. There are too many disciplines involved in biodiversity informatics for one institution to do it all by itself. You can't afford it, it's too big. And many of, the, many of the disciplines can be tangential to your main mission. But you need them, so you bring them in through partnerships. Through partnerships and networks, you join the global science community and the global biodiversity informatics community through GBIF, through many other kinds of, and, and its partners, and through many other networks. If you have partnerships, you tend to have smarter solutions. If you work by yourself in isolation, you'll be wasting a lot of resources and your solutions will tend to be not as smart. Because your solutions will be informed by the successes and the mistakes of others. You learn from the community. Community evolves. Smart solutions involve open source software that have achieved community standards. They've been tested again and again and again. So you don't want to start with a brand new database. You want to use a database out there, a software solution that's in wide use and has been tested and refined. You may want to use Specify. You may want to use Brahms. You may want to use some other uh, open source software. Don't use a proprietary software. So if I were you, I would advise against using KEMU, which the Smithsonian is using in the British Museum and Missouri Botanical Gardens. It's proprietary, costs eighty to $100,000 a year. Why do that? Why not use something that's free, supported by the National Science Foundation or some other unit? Here I'm talking about Specify, and that's the self-interest, but there are other very fine, accessible, open source, uh, non-proprietary, uh, databases and data solutions for you to use. Use common shared solutions and tools. Make sure the tools you use observe community standards, Darwin Core and so forth. We talked a lot about this yesterday and this was a really important point that started with Lucy's question. If you, through partnerships, you can leapfrog from zero to 100 almost instantaneously through the importation, through partnerships, almost free of expertise and tools. 
And you don't have to repeat the mistakes that, say, the developed countries have made over the last 20 years. You have a choice in setting up a biodiversity institution, a biodiversity informatics institution. You can grow a big institution, greater, say, than 15 individuals, or you can stay small, be nimble, be adaptive, and you can grow big through partnerships. I would advise staying small, making sure the, your size, and 15 is just an arbitrary number, but your size fits your core mission. Start with your core mission. Don't get distracted by, well, be nice to do this, be nice to do this, be nice to do this. Stick with your core mission. What is the size of the staff required for, to accomplish that core mission? For everything else, use partnerships. And of course, you also want to use partnerships for your core mission, but especially for tangential issues. Let me give you some examples. And these are just off the top of my head. You can choose anything at the center. Data. If you want to fill the gaps in the data, accessible knowledge. What are the kinds of partnerships you might form? Well, let's say you want to do biotic surveys to fill in gaps in Kenya around Lake Turkana, which apparently and with birds uh, is huge, and yet the bird fauna up there is absolutely spectacular. I've seen it, I have photographs of it. I'm only saying that because they're big birds. They're big, that's right. You know, you know, he talks a lot about birds, but this is just an aside, and it's also for YouTube. There's only three kinds of birds in this world. There's little brown birds, medium-sized brown birds, and big brown birds. <laughs> <I'm writing laughs> that Write that down. <laughs> Same thing applies to mammals. Right? Small, little small mammals, rodents, medium-sized mammals, you know, I don't know, hedgehogs, and big brown mammals, wildebeest. Okay, so for biosurveys and research projects, do you need to hire? Do you need to hire? Does Lucy's institution need to hire a whole bunch of um, uh, biodiversity specialists to go out and do surveys? Not necessarily. You have researchers at the university, both in Kenya as well as around the world, that want to do Kenyan biodiversity, work with them. They may be able to bring in dollars from their host countries to do the surveys in Kenya. Improve fitness for use for the data that you are uh, downloading from uh, GBIF. Use CREA. He's right here. You want to add data types. Okay, form partnerships with arthropod experts elsewhere, for example, or microbial experts, or virus experts, or experts in any of the data types that you need to add to. You are in a biodiversity informatics institution with collections and lots of records, both observational and, and, and voucher-based, and you need to digitize the data. Do you have to do it all by yourself? Do you have to hire the people to do it all by yourself? Not necessarily. Form a consortium. Say if it's plants, form a consortium of herbaria where most of their herbaria share most of their plants anyways. Uh, you know, one leaf goes here, there, there. Uh, um, so you may be able to achieve economies of scale in digitizing, say, all the localities in common or all the taxa in common. There may, you may be able together to afford one assembly line approach to digitizing and photographing each of the sheets as they come along, rather than every herbarium doing it on its own. In the publishing and sharing of data, again, certainly use GBIF. That's free. You just have to send them the data. 
You don't know how to send them the data? There are training classes that GBIF provides and others will provide, or that your nodes might help you with. What about analysis and modeling of data? Again, form partnerships with university researchers. That is their expertise. And then Lucy's organization can use the results to broadcast to policymakers and, and decision makers. They provide access to analytical tools that your institution might not have and might not know how to use. For filtering data sets, use taxonomic and geographic expertise at universities and elsewhere. For computational and infrastructure, again, there's expertise at universities. Universities are huge sources of expertise. Um, and usually it's free. GIS expertise, visualization expertise. We do this at the University of Kansas. We, at the Biodiversity Institute, have a partnership with computational science in the School of Engineering. And they help us with our visualization, with our computational needs, and so forth. What about the end of that chain? Data, analysis, modeling, and then results and narrative. Co-author your papers and your presentations with partners. If you can't present the data at national meetings, your partners can. But you have to get the word out somehow. If you co-author, there's a much better chance of publishing in a higher profile junior, uh, 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 journal than if you author a paper by yourself. It's just the law of averages. Co-author papers are usually more powerful, they're usually more multidisciplinary, they're usually better written, and they're usually more rigorous. Research relevance of your narrative results. Form a partnership with Lucy's organization. A policy unit, one of these bridge units that we in academia have been talking about that translates, is really good at translating the results of research into policy language or the language for a decision maker or policy maker. They, in turn, will spread the word to funding agencies, who then, in turn, are more likely to be receptive to a proposal from your institution for more research. Once the results are published and you go through this process, there's a greater chance of having, what's the next step? What's the follow-on research to the first one? And the consortium can continue. A consortium can be project-based. And depending on the project, the members of the consortium can come and go. You add one, you subtract one, depending on the need for that project. So consortia could, can, and partnerships can be fluid and don't have to be permanent. Research relevance, going in a different direction than the policy units, is involve the economists and political and social scientists at the university to look at your results of biodiversity and say, okay, what impact? might this have on agribusiness? What impact might this have on human health? What impact might this have on human demography and movement from urban areas to, to rural areas or vice versa? And of course this feeds back on funding agencies and uh, your competitiveness. Training. You want to train students? University partners are logical. Staff and students, uh, you can train them in field expeditions. Technical workshops just like this one, funded by external organizations. In science and policy workshops, again funded by external organizations. These are offered all the time. They come across my email um, uh, all the time. Grant writing. We teach courses 
at the University of Kansas on how to write a, the, a successful grant proposal. And we're good at it. The students that are trained in grant writing are exceptionally successful in getting support for their doctoral dissertations. Train them in scientific communication. Again, there are external organizations that will do this. National and multilateral facilities. Data publishing through GBIF, through data use and significance. Global data access will provide the, the national and multilateral facilities that you partner with will be able to uh, give you the kind of imprimatur for greater national and international studies and global studies. It'll be a, a, a terrific outlet for policy and decision makers and certainly make you more competitive for informatics funding. If we tell the National Science Foundation that we are a contributing member to GBIF, that raises, that one sentence raises our competitive advantage of getting funded over another institution that is not working with GBIF. Because the National Science Foundation wants its results to be based on the largest amount of data, the best data, and be disseminated internationally. And I'm sure the same would be true of your institutions in your countries. So, leveraging funds. Often this comes down to, let's be honest, you want to leverage support, you want to leverage resources, you want to leverage funds. That's a huge part of partnerships. So for data, you would leverage funds in this area and in this area and in this in consortium. For analysis and modeling, you leverage funds by even in-kind